It is so common for people who had childhood trauma to go through life feeling disconnected and unimportant to other people. And a big piece of that is feeling not heard. People don't listen when you express yourself or they listen, but they either don't get it or they don't believe you or they don't care. Do you ever feel like you are not heard? I'm Anna Runkle, also known as the Crappy Childhood Fairy, and I'm in my makeshift studios here in Los Angeles because back in my native Bay Area, there is so much smoke I was losing my voice. You can kind of hear it, right? Well, in this video, I want to talk about some reasons why you're not feeling heard. Now, if you're like all of us with CPTSD, one of your first questions is, is the other person actually making me feel this terrible feeling of not being heard? Are they doing this on purpose because they think I'm not worth it or they want to dramatize to me how much they don't care? Or am I actually doing something that sabotages my own ability to be heard? And the short answer is usually, probably, some of both. So let's talk about the other people are doing this to me scenario. This definitely happens. Some people really actually are too self-centered to pay attention to other people or to care or to pay sufficient attention to, to get what you're saying, to understand it. We all know these kinds of people. And if we went through trauma as kids, there's a pretty good chance that one or both of our parents had some of these same sort of hearing problems at times themselves, right? They couldn't hear us because either they were drunk, high, depressed, obsessed, or just too screwed up to hear anyone. And a lot of us with unhealed CPTSD have this very unfortunate tendency to collect people like that as friends and partners. And this can range from ordinary, you know, non-PTSD relationship dynamics where one person says, hey, I feel like you're not hearing me. And the other person just kind of rolls their eyes, right? That happens, that could happen to anybody in any relationship. Um, but it could also range up to more pronounced problems, people with a personality disorder or an addiction or people with just years and years of resentment where they are literally incapable of being present and taking in what you might be saying. Or we might find ourselves, and this would be true in the early stages of a relationship with an extremely self-centered person, maybe one with narcissistic tendencies, that they seem like they pay intense attention to us so incredibly, but then for no apparent reason, the rug comes out, they don't care about you, they hear nothing, right? That's called the discard phase. And the days of caring about you are over. And I know a lot of you watching have suffered in relationships like that. And I'm hoping you're at the stage of recovery where you're able to see those red flags now, the too good to be true behavior that comes before they throw you away and to hold yourself separate from attaching to that kind of person or having expectations of them in any way because no good thing ever comes from trying to make things work with someone who doesn't care about you. I talk about this extensively and what to do about it in my dating and relationships course for people with childhood PTSD. If you wanna find out about that, I've put a link to it in the description section below. But basically, if you're still dating, hooking up with, sleeping with, marrying, attaching to, chasing, texting, pining away for someone who cannot and will not hear you because they don't care, then this takes us right into the other category of causes. Not another person, but who, right? Well, at this point, when you see what you're dealing with and you don't leave, then the problem lies not with them, but with you. And you know I'm the tough love fairy, right? And I'm telling you, this is what we do when we're not healed yet. We complain about someone not hearing us, but we keep thinking we can make them change if we can just explain it right, or be nice enough, or lose some weight, or whatever imaginary thing we're blaming ourselves for. And actually, we do have some blame at this point, not for failing to change, but for holding on. And I think most people with CPTSD have done this somewhere between two and 200 times, right? So clinging to someone who is incapable of giving a crap about us is one way that we cause ourselves to not feel heard or indeed be heard. But let's talk about the subtler ways that we might play a role in this. Sometimes we're not heard because of the energy we're bringing to an interaction or because of the way we're communicating. Let's talk about the communication first. The fact is, 
that the effects of trauma, especially when we're under pressure, like in an argument or when we're upset, it can distort or jumble our thoughts and words. Does this happen to you? It is part of brain dysregulation and emotional dysregulation. And dysregulation is what CPTSD is made of. It's what it does. It's what drives most of the other symptoms we might be having after growing up with abuse and neglect. Now, when you're in this kind of dysregulated state, the urgency of feelings feel like they're crystal clear. They have to come out. And the feelings might be clear, but they come out just like a tsunami, run on, breathless, desperate. And this is hard for other people to hear. And if that person who you want to hear you has defenses going up because that intensity is scary for them, guess what? You're not gonna feel heard. I'm sure you've been on the receiving end too, and it can feel overwhelming, even threatening, when someone's getting all verbally intense on you. You can't think, you can't get a word in edgewise, and when they tell you that you're just not hearing me, you might feel like, you just want to give up and flee, right? You want to leave the room, storm out, check out in your mind. Or you do that subtle kind of nice face, but closed heart trick. You know what I'm talking about? Where you're like, sure, I hear you. Do you have that? The good face to make another person feel heard even while you're thinking this person is horrible. And to be honest, sometimes CPTSD does make us horrible. And this is one of the harder to talk about reasons why we don't get heard. And it's not just because we're communicating in an intense way, but because we're communicating in an unfair or even hurtful way. Maybe we're being manipulative. And remember, we never think we're being manipulative, but if you're having a hard time being direct about what you want and you're trying to dress it up with something you think will be more acceptable, but you find yourself getting into arguments because you aren't getting what you want, there's a good chance that your communication has gotten a smidge or two of manipulation in it. And people will instinctively recoil from that if they have any BS detectors at all. When you manipulate people through vague complaints or cold silence or guilt trips or fudging the truth or any of the little ways that we avoid saying directly, you know, hey, I'm feeling lonely or I'm feeling angry or insecure or uh, whatever and I wanna stop what we're doing right now and ask your help so I can get myself emotionally back on track again. When we use those subtle forms of manipulation, it's ultimately gonna make the hearing problem worse. You ever notice that when you're not real about your feelings, there's absolutely nothing the other person can do to make you feel better. And that's the telltale sign that some conflict with someone isn't what it seems. It's a false conflict. And the sign is that no matter what you or they do to fix it or help, you can't fix it. The problem is something else. And it takes honesty to get to what that is. And even then, what is honest is sometimes that the problem is unsolvable. And so when you're in a long dragged out conflict that's going nowhere and you're not feeling heard, this is something to ask yourself, is what I am trying to express the real, fair, true expression of my feelings? Not trying to punish the other person or exaggerate or minimize or mask feelings. So you ask yourself that and sometimes you just have to be willing to get more fair and honest. And I do have tools for that in my courses. We'll talk about that in a second. In reality, a lot of times we manipulate when we don't even know why we feel so unheard or unloved. We're just deep in a belief that the bad feeling that we're feeling, it must be caused by somebody else. And therefore we believe that they must be the ones to fix it. We're looking for a fix that in reality, no one can give us. We're in a flashback. The argument we're having is just making it worse. We end up begging to be comforted and then we can't be comforted. So it helps to know that another person can really only be supportive, but the fix is not theirs to give us. This is, this is that hole inside that only our own healing from trauma can fill. And part of that takes time and part of it can start right away. And that's what I teach. Sometimes pain, the pain of not being heard, of not being able to solve problems in relationships, sometimes that pain is the catalyst that makes good changes possible. So where you are right now is an okay place to start. You don't, there's nothing you have to get together to begin healing. You, where you are is a good place. It starts with one, believing that healing is possible. You gotta throw out all those ideas that you're doomed, you're cursed. Uh, this is a state of being for the rest of your life. It's not so, I'm here to show you, it's not so. 
Second, you need to adopt a steady day-by-day -day application of simple common sense steps that will begin to move you out of that triggered, dysregulated state so that you can think and breathe and compose your thoughts and make choices. And the fruit of all that, before you know it, is that you start being heard. So if you want to work with me, come on into my membership program. You know where to find all the info. It's in the description section below this video. It's good to be heard. It's important. And I want you to have that. After all that you've been through, you totally deserve the secure, connected, and witnessed feeling that comes when your CPTSD healing process empowers you to have that kind of relationship. And I will see you next week.